There's a very powerful hadith I wanted to share with you. It's narrated by Al Mughir ibn Shu'ba radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet narrates to us an interesting conversation. It's a conversation between Musa alayhi salam and his Lord. And Musa alayhi salam, Rasulullah sallallahu says, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the lowest person in Jannah? Right? Who is the lowest person that's going to enter into Jannah? What's the lowest manzila? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to him that it would be a person that would come after everyone else has entered into Jannah. And it would be said to him, enter and take your portion of it. And the man would say, Ya Allah, how can I take my portion when everyone else has already taken their portion? So there's, he would think that there's nothing left in Jannah because everyone else has already settled into Jannah. Now this isn't, we, we might know the other hadith where, which Rasulullah talks about the last person to enter Jannah. So it's obviously the same person. So he wouldn't know where to go because he'd think that everything was already taken in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, Ya Abdi, atarda an yakuna lak mulki malikin min muluk dunya Oh my servant, would you be pleased that you have the kingdom of, you know, the, uh, the kingdom of the world uh, that the greatest king in this world would have? And the man responds, Radit, qala na'am, yes, I'm pleased with that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَكَ ذَلِكَ وَمِثْلُ 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 حَتَّى بَلَغَ خَمْسَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so you have that. And, t and, and then another one like it, and another one like it, and another one like it, another one like it, and another one like it, until he reached five times. And the man says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Radit, I'm pleased. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Falaka kullu dhalik. So you have all of that. Wa ashru amthalu. And you will have 10 times that. So 50 times the kingdom of the world is what goes to the lowest person in Al Jannah. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Musa alayhi salam this and Musa alayhi salam is thinking to himself, well, if that's what the lowest person in Jannah gets, he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَمَا بَالُ أَعْلَاهَا So what about someone who's higher than that? Like I'm a prophet of Allah, I'm going to be in the sixth heaven. So what is it like for someone who's higher than that? And you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to Musa alayhi salam? He says, لا تسأل Don't ask. <laughs> Don't ask. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمْ تَرَى عَيْنِ Because no eye has seen it. وَلَمْ تَسْمَعْ أُذُنْ And no ear has heard it. وَلَمْ يَخْطُرْ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ بَشَرًا And it's never even come to the wildest imagination of a person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ The ayah in Surah Al-Sajda that no one knows what Allah, no eye can grasp what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believer as a reward for that which they used to do. Why do I bring up this very powerful hadith in Sahih Muslim? A lot of times when we think about Jannah, when we talk about Jannah, and we read some of the hadith about Jannah, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? You know, the first meal in Jannah is going to be fish liver, uh, and so that would make Bengalis very happy, no, no pun intended. Uh, you know, uh, that you're going to have trees that grow clothes, you know, you're going to have houses that are made of gold and, you know, musk is what's keeping the bricks together and so on and so forth. You read this stuff and it's like, wow, okay, this is really strange. And, you know, I don't even like fish liver, you know, because I'm not Bengali. Or it could be that, you know what, I'm reading about Hur al Ain and, you know, that sounds really uh, inappropriate to me, this Hur al Ain thing, this whole Hur al Ain thing. So let's just say that it means grapes. Wait a minute, but Rasulullah is telling us that it's a different place, okay? We're not talking about, you know, something that we would see in dunya or something that even makes sense to dunya because when Rasulullah described the women of paradise, Rasulullah said that they would be transparent, you could see their bone marrow. Now, would you be attracted to a woman if you could see her bone marrow in dunya? No, it's a totally different realm, it's a totally different world. Or someone says, you know, why do I have to be with my husband in paradise? Why do I have to be with my wife in paradise? You know, I don't want to see them anymore, I'm sick of them, I had to live all of dunya with them. It's different. In Jannah, people are different. In Jannah, there is no uh, jealousy. In Jannah, there is no hatred. In Jannah, there is no dissatisfaction because the one who created desire is giving you all that you could possibly desire. And in Jannah, you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tu khayrun wa abqa. And the akhirah is better and, and everlasting. 
right? Because in dunya you get something, and even if it's great, you know, it's not going to last. Eventually, it's going to, you know, eventually it's going to reach its expiration, or you'll get sick of it. One of the two things is bound to happen. But in Jannah, Rasulullah describes that every time the wife will see the husband and the husband will see the wife again, they would say to each other, you're even more beautiful than the last time I left you. Right? Now, so, you, so with that being said, then what's the point of even reading a hadith about Jannah? And is Jannah really going to be satisfying to me? Is it going to be too weird for me to really enjoy? And this is the beauty of it. As different as Jannah is, <clears throat> It's not that weird. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the things that are familiar to us when it benefits us and when it makes us happy. So for example, the Prophet ﷺ said that whenever a person enters into a Jannah, they would go to their homes in Jannah easier then they would go to their homes in dunya. You know, when you're driving home from work, you're not think, you're, you know, hopefully you're not pulling out your GPS, uh, you know, looking at how to get home or looking up Google Maps. You're used to driving home. You drive home subconsciously. You could be talking on the phone, eating cereal, driving with your foot, whatever, how crazy you are. But you're going to make it home at the end of the day because you, you're so used to driving home. Rasulullah said that a person would go to his home and he, would, and he would know the way to his home more than he knew the way to his home in dunya. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares with us something very beautiful in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةٍ رِزْقًا قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ Every time you're given something in Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you some sustenance in Jannah, some risk in Jannah, you say, oh, هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ This is what we had before, meaning what? You see a mango in Jannah, you see an orange in Jannah, you see a banana in Jannah, you see an apple in Jannah. Uh, and, and Imam Malik rahimahullah, he said that the banana, he used to eat bananas because he said bananas are most like the fruits in Al Jannah because they're not seasonal. Uh, he used to love eating bananas, Imam Malik rahimahullah. And so you see these fruits and you see this list and you see some things that, that resemble what they resembled in dunya, but then you take a bite of it. And then, you know, you see what it, you, it seems to be the same thing, but once you are, once you take a bite of it, this is not the same, right? This is totally different. You know, this, this does not taste the way that it tasted in dunya. You know, this doesn't have a sour aftertaste. This is, this is totally different. So Allah gives you enough to be familiar with and at the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you that level of excitement Allah gives you the element of surprise and subhanallah there is one thing in Jannah which no human being could experience in dunya and that is an-nadharu ila wajhihi al-kareem subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to stare at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to actually see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran lilladheena ahsanu al-husna wa ziyada for those who performed with excellence, they will have excellence returned to them and more. And the Sahaba understood. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we know what Husna is here. It's talking about Jannah. Jannah for your excellence, Husna for Ihsan. But what is more than Jannah? And that's when the Prophet ﷺ told them, Anadaru ila wajhillah. Right? Because that's something that you could never experience in dunya, that no human being could experience in dunya. That's something that is beyond our imagination, that is beyond pleasure. And we would have that pleasure bi ta'ala in Jannah. The, the reason why I make this video, dear brothers and sisters, and the reason why I bring this up is because again, a lot of times we try to dunyify Jannah. And we get caught up, you know, we try to see Jannah through our worldly lens. Right? We try to understand Jannah with the scope of dunya. And that's a big problem. Right? Don't worry about the details of Jannah. And don't worry about the trees that are growing clothes. And don't worry about who you're going to be with in Jannah. Just know that you're going to be happy. So the point is, try to make it there. Do everything that you can to make it there. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the authentic hadith that we mentioned in the previous video. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Man al jannah thalath marrat, whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for jannah three times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will allow jannah to make dua to Allah to say, Oh Allah, enter him into me. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter us into jannah al firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter us into jannah al firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter us into jannah al firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. I hope to see you all either in dunya or in jannah. Allahumma ameen.
Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku so you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.